But to the subject at hand, uh, the cell phone, which I think of, uh, among other things, as a, a little big blender, a device that uh, integrates the digital and the physical world everywhere we go. In a sense, this all begins, and apropos of uh, Lloyd's presentation and that picture of the brain with Paul McLean's triune system, this all begins, of course, with the human brain. And from the standpoint of communications, uh, the human brain is an arch-typical uh, little big blender. It's little in the sense that it uh, only weighs about a kilogram or so. Uh, it's big and it's a blender if you think about the fact that with this kilogram of material, we see, hear, smell, taste, touch, dream, project, recall. Uh, in other words, all the things that we communicate about are processed in this center that we have here in our heads. And therefore, it's entirely natural that as we invent communication technologies, we would try to invent things that uh, in the same way integrated a lot of processes. It's entirely natural, uh, but it's also extremely difficult from a technological standpoint. And so if you look at the history of media and communications, you see that uh, in most of the early and middle and even some recent media, rather than integrating and blending various sensory and cognitive processes, instead you have uh, an emphasis and, and an extension of a single process. Writing, after all, from a sensory point of view, uh, extends just our sense of vision. And as Marshall McLuhan point out, pointed out back in 1962 in the Gutenberg Galaxy, uh, the, the process of both writing and reading is very anti-sensory, in that what's happening is you're taking the whole world of uh, perception and the whole world of thoughts and dreams and recollections and you're sort of steamrolling them into uh, just a series of squiggles uh, on a wall or later on a page. A very one-dimensional uh, approach to the world from the point of view of communication. And as a matter of fact, as writing developed, it continued along those lines. Uh, if anything, printing, although it helped written words reach many, many more people, uh, made the written word even less sensory than it was when it was handwritten, when there was at least a variety in the writing, and you can look at a handwritten piece of work even today and get something of the sense of the person who was writing it, not so in the case, of course, of print on a page where it's all standardized. And uh, going ahead uh, a few hundred additional years, if you think about what the telegraph does, uh, in many ways, that's the height of abstraction and removal from the sensory world. In fact, the telegram is uh, three levels of abstraction removed from reality. Morse code is an abstraction of written language, which in turn is an abstraction of spoken language, which in turn is an abstraction of the real world. So the price that we paid as human beings for this miracle of instant communication. Communication at the speed of light, which is what we had with the telegraph. The price we paid was uh, a complete loss of uh, the, sens the sensory basis of communication. However, that was remedied about 50 years later with the telephone which uh, in one fell swoop uh, not only got rid of the Morse code of uh, the telegraph, but also of the written word, and brought us back just one level uh, removed from physical reality with speech. And furthermore, brought into play emotional nuance, tone of voice. And so 1876 marks a really crucial point in the development of media, of communication, and, and language. 